But for more now on the future of Congress and of both political parties, I'm joined by Lisa Desjardins, a correspondent for PBS NewsHour, Naveen Nayak, president and executive director of the Center for American Progress Action Fund, and Republican strategist Brad Todd. So, Naveen, what did the Pelosi era really mean for Democrats? She spanned multiple presidents. She was sort of like the glue that got this done over the past 20 years. It's hard to imagine, I think, for many Democrats turning the page on that era. It really is. It was, you know, it was fairly emotional. She actually marks my time in Washington oh, doing this kind of work. And uh, you think of the accomplishments. I mean, I think that's what she wants to be remembered for. And they, they are pretty historic, whether it's on health care, what she's done now with infrastructure, student law. There's a whole set of accomplishments. Climate change at the top of that list. We'll be talking about her for a long time. But it really is. I think she's going to age even better than she's been worn in the sense that I don't think we're going to have a speaker like her who is so committed to actually getting things done and so able to rally her caucus to actually uh, get these kinds of accomplishments. Lisa, we've covered these three, yeah. you know, potential incoming new leaders for a while. I don't know if you heard my question to Peter Welsh, but to me, it's like, I wonder if they really know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. I mean, to step into the spotlight in this way, what do you expect to see from this new leadership team? It's almost like marrying into the royal family. Like, you have yeah. no idea, really, <laughs> right. like, until you're doing it, how crazy yeah. it is. Um, I think this is an untested group. They certainly have been in dress rehearsals, as you speak, doing, doing uh, press conferences regularly. Hakeem Jeffries was part of an impeachment team, those kinds of things. They're untested, so we really don't know what we're going to get. I expect them to make some mistakes. But I also think that's a big part of why now Speaker Pelosi will become Representative Pelosi. She's going to stay there to sort of add some heft and some backbone as they continue. Brad, what does it say to you that the party that outperformed expectations, you know, has their leaders stepping back and the party that underperformed is keeping their leadership team around, the Republicans in both the House and the Senate largely keeping leadership teams in place that I think most Republicans acknowledge did not give them the results that they were hoping for this well, time around. Well, it wasn't as good as we wanted, but Democrats did lose seats each of the last two elections in the House. And it is time for generational change on the Democratic side. And I think that the, uh, without having a uh, you know, full Democratic control, the president's agenda is not going to uh, move very much in the House. And so the need for a seasoned veteran speaker is much less than it would be mm -hmm. if you're trying to move the president's agenda. Uh, and while it's divided government, it's probably a good time for the Democrats to break in new leaders. Uh, and I think for Republicans, it's a good time for us to figure out how to be a majority again. You know, we have to oppose the president's policies and we have to come up with those of our own. One of the lessons we learned last week was that I think Republicans in Congress did not put forth a proactive agenda uh, that independents could rally around. That's the Rick Scott argument <laughs> to a degree. I, but Republicans lost something here, too. Nancy Pelosi has been the chief boogeyman for Republicans for most of those last 20 years. Joe Biden doesn't generate the same hate that Speaker Pelosi does. How does how do Republicans react to that in the next election cycle and as kind of they go forward? Well, Nancy Pelosi couched herself as a partisan warrior, right? She tried to take over Congress for the Democrats from the Republicans. She's mm -hmm. a liberal from San Francisco, the most liberal city in the country. So in many ways, she 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 welcomed that caricature that became very convenient in most campaigns. And she was also a very partisan speaker. She's a successful speaker, but she was a partisan one. There are, you don't find Nancy Pelosi accomplishments that are bipartisan accomplishments. No, not typically. And, no. and so therefore... The attacks on Nancy Pelosi and campaigns were true. Voters did see her as a partisan, and they did see her as a symbol of democratic control of government. I don't think that was inaccurate. Uh, I don't know who's going to be the next symbol of that for Republicans. Chuck Schumer might be a candidate. Naveen, uh, all this talk about generational change in leadership, I kind of wonder how that is being heard down the street. Uh, the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. How should Democrats think about this moment of generational change, and how should the White House embrace this moment or not? I mean, President Biden set himself up to be this bridge between generations. He talked about it during the campaign, but now he's the octogenarian kind of staying behind here while these, all this other group of leaders moves on. I guess I get a little bit to Brad's point, I actually think if, you know, how different would this moment have been if Democrats had picked up five more seats? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, th would there have been more of a call for Speaker Pelosi to stick around to keep implementing Biden's agenda? And to that, ex to that extent, President Biden has just presided over the most successful midterm election for a president in maybe, you know, at least 50 years in a, in a first term. And I think we'll get credit for the unbelievable agenda he passed in his first two years. So I don't know why there'd be a, a ton of pressure given the actual success he's been enjoying both legislatively and politically. I would say George Bush's midterm was better. Except the difference here, George Bush 
We had 9-11. He was at 70 percent approval he, he rating. Did, he did gain seats and was more popular. I mean, Biden it, lost Congress. So, I mean, it's... I, mean, I think the problem we have here is both parties are getting the same message from voters, but yeah. they're just looking at the message each other's getting. We know that the Democratic initial agenda from President mm -hmm. Biden was two to the left for voters and for the votes in the House and Senate. And now Republicans are getting the message. You guys are too extreme, too. To that end, I want to play Mitch McConnell's prognosis here from the press conference, which I think you were at the other day. And we'll talk about it on the other side. Here was McConnell's take on this question of uh, how, people, how the voters were viewing these midterms. We underperformed among voters who did not like President Biden's performance in among independents and among moderate Republicans who looked at us and concluded too much chaos, too much negativity, and we turned off a lot of these centrist voters. So how do they get these centrist voters back? Yeah, especially when it's with a House that has really just been waiting to do investigations mm -hmm. and really speak to their base. You know, I think it's going to be difficult, and I think we may see what I see for those centrist voters that I was talking to, including some of my own family, more motivation to stay home. And that is going to be the trick. It's not so much moving a Democrat to Republican or the vice versa. It's getting those voters who are just exhausted and fed up to show up again. And I, I don't hear anything from either party, or especially from Republicans, from Mitch McConnell yesterday, saying how they're going to do that. So, Brad, Kevin McCarthy either has a different read or just a different set of circumstances to deal with here, right? We have House Republicans going out today saying they want to investigate Hunter Biden. That's going to be one of their first orders of business. That doesn't seem to fit Mitch McConnell's prescription. So I wonder, which do you think it is here? Does McCarthy have a different theory of the case or just a different set of problems he has to solve as leader of a House Republican conference? Well, first, I take a little bit of issue with Senator McConnell's point because we did have examples of, of, of independents and moderate Republicans voting for Republicans. It was for Republican governors. Mm -hmm. Ron DeSantis, Mike DeWine, Brian Kemp, Henry McMaster. The story just goes down the line. But every Democratic governor saved but one where, that reelected. But in those too. swing states, those large swing states where Republican governors had a strong, positive, conservative agenda to run on, mm -hmm. they were elected. In Washington, where the whole story was stop Joe Biden and Democrats, we got a stalemate. And so... It's incumbent upon Republican leaders in Congress to put forward that agenda and to take some chances with that agenda so that independents realize they have a, they have a better alternative. I think this is actually a challenge for Republicans. There's really just two, mm -hmm. two proposals on the table. One is actually run on their agenda, which there was an agenda. The, the, remember, the conversation at the end of the year was a Republican agenda to have a national ban on abortion, to either privatize or end social security. It was never a national ban on abortion. by all the leaders. No, there was but, not. But that was, that was no, no, the you conversation. You can't say that. There was not a national ban on abortion. There was a national ban on late-term abortion. Two, Get it right. Get, it, get your facts right. Like to, um, unless you can't do your math. I'll be but glad to the, put that on the ballot. The, the, win the, the national, the majority of House Republicans in the caucus support a life, uh, a complete ban on abortion. The majority of House Republicans in the caucus complete, Every Democrat in the House voted abortion. for abortion so all the let, way to the due date, which is There's, the least popular There position. is the agenda. Yeah. Mitch McConnell is not saying we need a different agenda. He's saying we need to be quiet about it. So what He's is, saying we shouldn't be talking about our agenda until we get elected, and then we'll implement it. So what does Joe Biden do about his agenda now? What does Joe Biden still have on his to-do list that can get through a Congress in this configuration? I actually think that's going to be, to a large extent, up to Kevin McCarthy. I mean, if there's one story of the last two years, it has actually been one of the most successful periods of bipartisan legislation, mm -hmm. right? We had the Chips and Science Act, we had the infrastructure bill, we had gun safety. I mean, there, we, I can't think of a time in my 20 years where there's been that level of, and Joe Biden gets a lot of credit for that because he is actually willing to engage with Republicans. I think Kevin McCarthy, the, the, the opportunity is there for Kevin McCarthy. I'm not sure where they're going to find common ground, yeah. but we've seen nothing from Republicans. Kevin McCarthy has basically said that Marjorie Taylor Greene is as much influence in that caucus, which she's not going to work with Joe yeah, Biden. I think, I think, Republicans yeah. have had majority of the House for exactly how many hours? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. So I not think yet. we're <laughs> still waiting to see them roll out their agenda. That's fair. But there is there are some Republicans and Democrats who talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Kevin McCarthy, friends with Kirsten Sinema, who's an important Democrat in the Senate. So there are opportunities. I don't know if anyone's going to take well, them. Lisa, I would give you the last word here yeah, in the minute or so I've got left here. But I mean, if there's two guys in Washington who know how to get along with people who they don't like, mm -hmm. it's probably Joe Biden and Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Is there an opportunity for a personal relationship here that could make a difference in Washington? I think there is an opportunity, but their politics are so different. Because Kevin yes. McCarthy, <laughs> right? Kevin McCarthy has really just cared about his base. He's got the Freedom Caucus. Very different kind of politician than I think Joe Biden, even though on a personal level, sure, I think they could get a Not lot. a lot of room for McCarthy to move, at least in the next seven weeks, but we'll see what happens on the other side. Maybe not after. Maybe not after either. All right, we've got to leave it there. Naveen, Brad, Lisa, thank you all. 
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.